Hello, super nerd friends. It's Wednesday. I know it's Wednesday. Somehow. I don't know, it feels like magic sometimes, just knowing the difference. But, uh, yeah, Alexis, you were telling me about your, your uh, it's, uh, it makes me annoyed just thinking about it. Like, yeah, it takes time to get a job, and time to get an apartment, and what, what is this madness, and, ah, uh, it's so annoying. Uh, but yeah, you'll get through it. And it, and it's so, you know, it is kind of worse is because you did move back because you want to spend time with them and now they're like nope get out of the house go go get a job or something I'm like no but <laughs> you've only been there a couple days it's insane but uh but yeah it's through the wormhole i don't know you've been talking about it and and i didn't read i didn't remember it was that book but i love that book i remember we were sitting in in your room and and oh i feel so bad i forgot the cactus's name i don't remember I feel really bad. <laughs> like, it, was, it was the only one that had a name, right? Or did the bamboo? No, the bamboo didn't have a name. I don't think. Was it Carl? No, it couldn't have been Carl. Anyway. But yeah, and you were doing homework, and, and I, I just sat there and I like read through the entire book. It was really interesting. I mean, I remember the thing about the time and the brains and this is the universe. And I'm like, oh man. It's cool. I don't understand it, but I'm used to reading fiction, things I don't understand. It's still cool, not that <laughs> it is fiction, but uh, it kind of follows that same, like, I don't entirely understand what's happening, but it makes my brain happy. Uh, but we, we like questioning the unknowable. I've been reading a book about this, and kind of the brain and how it works with stories. Uh, but we like knowing the unknowable, even when it isn't practical, because we, um, we're, 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 we, we're people. <laughs> it's really scientific. Our intrinsic, beautiful humanness is why uh, we're, we're driven by biology and neurochemical makeups and stuff. And and it, uh, I don't know, drives us just to be curious and to find answers and craft narratives that make sense. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's why, I don't know, I mean, how many other species do you know of that really have a monopoly on mythology and religion? and fiction writing. It's pretty slim. Um, unless there's a whole canon of like bacterial literature that we're missing out on. How fascinating would that be? But I mean, even history's told us a story, and it's, uh, it probably began for practical reasons. Like, you know, I heard Cousin Chuck ate those red berries down by the river, and then he died. And, uh, you know, just being able to effectively communicate things like that be a narrative, it's, you know, better equipped people to survive, and then you can't just say, like, brain, only be curious about the red berry stories, but not about stories about where we are in the universe, or how we got here, and don't, don't ignore all those niggling, niggling questions about, uh, you know, why the Earth-centric model of the universe doesn't make sense, and only focus on the, you know, what was that rustle that I just heard, maybe it's a tiger, although you sh should pay attention to that one too. And um, I don't know, personally I'd rather have evidence. I mean, I I like stories. I'm a huge fan of the story. Big S capital story, the grand narrative, but um, it, it just makes absolutely no sense to me to worship any of them. Uh, and I think, I think a, a light goes out in the world when people are willing to abandon their, their curiosity and stop questioning and wondering about the world, because uh, like when they're told to, or they, uh, they're just told so often what should be the truth, and then they believe that should be the truth, even if there's really no reason besides the people are telling them to. And this isn't just religion either, people, people do this for all sorts of reasons, like Alexis is always telling me about people that call her a liar when she tells them something about history, just because they've been taught a certain thing is true, and then they, they just don't want to hear anything else. It's really awful. It's like, oh, but you're missing out on something really beautiful and grand and, yeah, and uh, especially when it happens to kids en masse and it's just like, ah, uh, all those brains, ah, uh, it's horrible. But, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't imagine a piece of knowledge that would shatter my world to, to learn it. And I, I think that's why some people reach for religion or scientists get really wrapped up and really aggressive about defending their uh, their ideas, sometimes even when it's just the smallest thing between like this theory versus the other, and it's just like, 
war breaks out because, you know, they named a frog this and it should have been that or something. But, I don't know, like, it's threatening to them because that's it's the fabric of their world about what is true and what, what should be. It's that should, that niggling should. Uh, but I think that's part of what makes it exciting is we'll never, we'll never know everything. And that, that kind of takes the pressure off in a way. I feel like my, my eye's twitching. <laughs> but but we, we can't know, so there's no, there's no final goalpost to be stressing about reaching someday. So we're free to just try as hard as we can and get as far as we can go and just have fun. And it's, you know, it's the final frontier of knowledge that should be exciting and just neat. And instead it just it really is stressful to people. But uh, the, the world isn't going to change. I suppose, I mean, we can change it, but the world doesn't change uh, whether you're in possession of the facts or whether you're not. Uh, I mean, it's, it's still the same world, no matter what. I mean, just because you read a book doesn't mean the world changes, it's just the way you see it changes. And, uh, you know, hopefully, after you learn it, you're better prepared to deal with the world. Uh, this is what really bothers me when people treat research and certain kinds of enlightenment and learning and information as shameful. I mean, that's how dystopias start. It's very disturbing. There was an, an interview, this is going to be really geeky, there was an interview between Stephen Colbert and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist who I love, my, my two like absolute nerd crushes, having an interview. There's, it's on YouTube. It's like, <laughs> it's like an 84 minute video, and I watched the whole thing at some point. I think over the summer, one summer. But yeah, two of my heroes having a big geek fest, and uh, so yeah, I would recommend watching that. If you have any interest in 84 minutes to spare? But uh, at some point, I think Stephen asks. Um, asked Neil deGrasse Tyson if it's always better to know, uh, if it's, if it's better to know or not to know, even if, um, if the information you learn might be difficult to handle, you know, even if it's painful to know or it's not, not easy, which is kind of, kind of thing that Becky's talking about. And Neil, he thinks about it for a moment, and, uh, and he does say yes, it is better to know, and... I really liked what he said. I forgot his exact words, but it was, um, it was something like, uh, if, you know, if something is bad, if, especially if it's something out in the world, if it's bad or wrong, uh, and, and it is, it's definitely better to be informed, because if, um, to know, uh, because if you're an informed citizen, then you can try to change it. I'm like, that's so beautiful, thank you. But yeah, no matter, no matter what you learn, you will be better informed to take the next step, and sometimes that equates to it being better to know, especially when it's hard, or when it's something that doesn't quite fit with how you usually see the world. And I <laughs> said something to that effect in like half my library school applications, especially the ones that were like, I like library science because I read a lot of dystopia books, or something like that. And But yeah, it's kind of cool because this, um, this is where all that English major the science nerd and the library, baby library and things all collide and, you know, where accountability ends and dystopias, or where accountability starts and dystopias end. I'm not trying to be an evil dictator, but that's what I believe, that's what I believe personally and for society in general, though, uh, I mean, for certain in info, especially personal info, I completely understand that sometimes it just doesn't happen. I mean, being informed uh, is a very privileged state, uh, in a sense. I mean, having the ability to safely inform others even more so. People are people are killed all the time, all over the world, for daring to be informed, you know, without trial or appeal. And I'm really aware of that, perfectly aware of that. Something uh, I care very deeply about, and it's something that affects every person I know. I. Uh, I have a friend in New York City who is uh, kind of exceptionally privileged in that way, and it's uh, she, she's aware of it and kind of uses this as a way to kind of go out and talk about it in the world, I guess. But she has support of her family and her community and financial and cultural uh, resources to live and work in places where she can be open about who she is in her life, and she's. Uh, getting married to her girlfriend this year, and both their families are going to attend, and everything's just kind of great. And I have another friend who, uh, whose internet 
friends and siblings are basically the only people on earth who really know who, um, who really know who she is, and she doesn't dare tell her parents or like her aunts and uncles or anything, because uh, I mean certainly not before she's financially independent, maybe just not ever, you know, because uh, losing their love and support is definite possibility. Some people just aren't going to be convinced, and they don't want to be even more than we want to convince them, just, you know, no matter how much either side loves the other. And, uh, I don't know, ignorance and fear, it isn't restricted to, like, red states, or it isn't, it isn't just the, in the realm of the undereducated, or the extremists, or the repressed, or the people that we think of as being evil or different. It's, it's in everyday life, and the most mundane parts of of, of living, and it's really easy to uh, condemn the, the obvious parts of that that we see in the world, and uh, a lot less easy to uh, to see the... or hard to see how less clearly criminal aspects of that can create a climate where, like, kids kill themselves, because they've learned that who they are isn't okay, and it's not fundamentally right, and it's shameful, or you can make jokes about it, or make snide remarks, or just pretend they don't exist, because they're not worthy of being loved. And that kind of thing builds up. And yet, people are also capable of astonishing generosity, and sometimes you can find unconditional love and acceptance in most surprising places. And it's important to remember that too, that, you know, Society can be pretty messed about things, and when we have issues, they tend to go really deep. But people can change, and they can reevaluate old beliefs and gain new perspectives, and sometimes learning and love does win out over ignorance and fear. And this is the part where I very emphatically do not start crying, but this is it. This is all the things I really care about uh, all, in one, all in one video, and I think I might actually get under 15 minutes. Yes! Uh, but, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, you know, evolutionary neurobiology and Stephen Colbert and library justice and equality, my two very amazing super nerd friends. But, yeah, safe, safety comes before information, and it should, because whether, whether they know doesn't change whether it's true or not. And if when it becomes safe to tell them, there'll be, there'll be a time, and it'll be okay. Um, but... Like, I start small. Um, marriage is the big thing these days. My classic argument is always, um, uh, you know, we, we try to run this country on the separation of church and state. Don't always do a good job, but we do try. So, if uh, we think the definition of marriage should be um, somehow narrowed in some aspect, then really don't have a problem with that, as long as it's for a reason that has nothing to do with a personal belief system, such as religion or some flimsy and weirdly inaccurate definition of marriage, usually based on historical facts. You know, it's funny, but they usually never can give a reason. But, uh, yeah, I was going to talk about more school stress and stuff. Um, a really neat um, new assistantship just came up. They sent me an email about it, and it's, like, ridiculously nice. I don't know if remember said this in my last video. I'm with you, Becky. I don't remember what my videos are about, either, really. Um, so I'm gonna apply for that, and, uh, I don't know. Hope I get it, because that'd be nice. So, yeah, before I actually do it 15 minutes, good night. Happy Wednesday. Bye!